Is your salon ready to open after the shutdown? I'm going to read to you, I'll try not to make it too boring, the 28 uh, rules that are set out by the state of Georgia, the Cosmetology Association, and go through all of those things. Sometimes it's easier to hear it along with reading it so we can digest it all. Let you know who I am. I'm Bonnie McGowan, Banika Shears. I have a company selling shears throughout the world. A lot of you don't know I actually have a bachelor's degree in biology. I am not a hairstylist. <laughs> and this is um, it really concerning to me to make sure that you, the cosmetologist, stay safe and your customers stay safe. And I think women feeling good about themselves, having their hair color done, haircuts, is essential to our mental well-being. We wake up in the morning and we see a skunk gray streak through our hair. It, it affects our mental capacity and right now um, depression, suicide, um, spousal abuse, those things are rampant. So I think hairstylists in our own way are doing what we can to fight this pandemic. So I'm going to read all of it. It may be a little long. But I'm going to show you pictures of some really nice looking salons that are empty, salons from all over the world. You'll enjoy looking at it. Oh, we've got to keep awake as we're learning all these things because it's got to sink in. If you have a salon, you may want to play this video for them to make sure that they have not only read it, but they've actually absorbed it in their brains. Because it's really, really important for all of us. Even um, the pu general public probably needs to know what the um, rules are because when I read it over, <laughs> I know I would be safer in a hair salon than I will be in the grocery store so, or Lowe's for sure or Home Depot or the liquor store. So I think it's important for all of us to be aware of all the safeguards that you as cosmetologists, and this is for Georgia, but I'm sure things are going to roll out in other states and this will be pertinent to you. Safety guidelines for reopening barber and cosmetology salons. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Georgia State Board of Cosmetologists and Barbers recommends reopening barber and cosmetology salons and shops with the following strict guidelines in order to protect the safety of clients and employees. The recommendation should be used in conjunction with the board rules for safety and sanitation that are currently in place. Keep in mind that these guidelines will be in effect during the period of the COVID-19 pandemic and may be adjusted as necessary, and they will be reduced when safe to do so. Upon inspection, if any salon or shop is found in violation of these guidelines, they may be closed immediately by public health officials or the board. Um, one other thing I want to add to this is if you need the board rules for safety and sanitation, um, we have a link below to our Banika.com website and you can download them there and get a certificate for your continuing education if you're in Georgia. Salon shop owners and managers should use the OSHA guidance on preparing workplaces for COVID-19 as a guide for reopening. I'll put that link below. Temperature checks. Salons should consider use of a touchless infrared thermometer to check the temperature of employee each day and of each client who enters the salon shop. Any employee or client who has a temperature above 99 degrees Fahrenheit should be sent home immediately and not allowed to return to the salon shop until they have no fever and no evidence of COVID-19 symptoms. One comment on this, I ordered one of these infrared thermometers online over a month ago and I'm still waiting for it to come in. So that those touchless infrared thermometers may be hard to come by. Ask each client entering the shop the following questions. Have you had a cough? Have you had fever? Have you been around anyone exhibiting these symptoms within the last 14 days? Are you living with anyone who is sick or quarantined? Limit people in the shop or salon. Salons, shops should consider seeing clients by appointment only. Salon, shops should consider telephonic or online scheduling. 
limit the number of persons waiting in the salon shop. It is recommended that clients wait outside the salon or shop in their vehicle until the cosmetologist or barber is ready to serve them. It is recommended that persons not being serviced in the salon shop wait outside the salon shop. Salons, shops are not to be used for social gathering places, exclamation mark. Next, maintain social distancing at all times. Spacing between persons in the salon should be at least six feet, except when staff are servicing clients. Salons should consider additional spacing between booths, divider shields, and or alternate work schedules to accomplish this. Next, personal protective gear. Wearing mask. Salon shop owners will be required to wear mask at all times. Salons may want to consider providing masks to clients. Clients should wear face masks to the extent possible when receiving services. Face shields, if available. It's recommended that employees wear face shields when servicing clients. Gloves, it's recommended that employees wear disposable gloves when servicing clients and change gloves between each client to the greatest extent possible. Capes, each client should be draped with a clean cape. Capes should be laundered following the fabric recommendations between each client or salons may consider using disposable capes and dispose of the cape after it's used. Smocks. Employees should wear a clean smock between each client. Smocks should be laundered following the fabric recommendations between each client or salon may consider using disposable smocks or dispose of the smock after use on a client. Neck strips. Employees should use protective neck strips around the neck of each haircut client. Hand washing. With soapy warm water for a minimum of 20 seconds will be required by employees between every client service. If you notice when I read this, some things say should and some say required. Uh, imagine there's some leeway in there. Next, employee clothing. Employees should arrive at the salon showered and wearing clean clothing. Well, I hope you would anyway. Employees should change clothes before entering their homes when they return from work. I guess that's in your garage. I don't know. Let's continue. PPG, such as gloves, gowns, drapes, linens, and eye coverings, should be changed between each client. These used items should be cleaned and disinfected or discarded in a closed container. Next section. Disinfection. All salons, and I'm using the word salons instead of salons slash shops for clarity, but if I say salons, you know I mean shops. All salons should be thoroughly cleaned and disinfected prior to reopening. Disinfect all surfaces, tools, and linens even if they were cleaned before the salon was closed. Use disinfectants that are EPA registered and labeled as bactericidal, viricidal, and fungicidal. No product will be labeled for COVID-19 yet, but many will have human coronavirus efficiency either on the label or available on their website. The EPA has approved any product that has tested as effective against human coronavirus. If in doubt of the effectiveness, check the EPA website. Disinfectant for immersion of tools must be mixed daily and replaced sooner if it becomes contaminated throughout the workday. Disinfectant only works on a clean surface, so clean all surfaces and tools with hot soapy water. Ship shape or cleaning wipes. If using wipes, be sure to cover surface thoroughly before disinfecting. One note here about your shears, don't dip them in soapy water, don't run them under the sink. Um, you want to clean them preferably with rubbing alcohol, something 50 to 90 percent. Alcohol wipes would work well on those. Putting them in the soapy water and not drying them effectively could cause them to rust. Continuing on. Contact time on label must be observed for disinfectant to work. Contact time refers to how long the disinfectant is visibly wet on the surface, allowing it to thoroughly destroy all of the pathogens. Typical contact time for immersion sprays is 10 minutes. 
or disinfectant wipes is two to four minutes. Disinfectants used for immersion must be changed daily or sooner if it becomes contaminated. Example, hair, debris, floating in the solution, or cloudy solution. Disinfectant is for hard, non-porous surfaces, glass, metal, and plastic. Porous, soft surfaces cannot be disinfected and must only be used once and then discarded tools such as cardboard files, buffers, drill bits, etc. Launder all linens, towels, drapes, and smocks in hot soapy water and dry completely at the warmest temperature allowed and store in an airtight cabinet. Store all used and dirty linens in an airtight container. The use of mask is mandatory. Place a clean towel placed over the face of your client while at the sink in a good way to protect their mouth, nose, and eyes. Minimize to the greatest degree possible up close, direct, face-to-face -face contact with clients. I would like to add here for your clippers and your shears, they must be kept oiled or they're not going to work properly. So after you disinfect them, be sure you oil them and that your oil is clean. I recommend H42, and I know it's effective against the HIV virus, that would be acceptable, and that's an oil-based disinfectant. Great for your clippers, great for your shears. You can get that from H42 from Beauty Supplies, from Banica.com, or direct from H42. Going on, your reception area. Remove all unnecessary items, such as magazines, newspapers, service menus, any other unnecessary paper products and decor. Decor. Wipe down all seats and tables. Cloth chairs cannot be properly cleaned and disinfected. Using a plastic cover should be considered. Wipe reception desks with disinfectant. Consider discontinuing use of paper appointment books or cards and replace with electronic options. Employees should frequently wash their hands after using the phones, computer, cash register, and credit card machine. Wipe these surfaces between each use. Avoiding the exchange of cash can help greatly in preventing spread of virus, but if this is unavoidable, be sure to wash and sanitize hands well after each transaction. The use of credit and debit transactions is preferred using touch, swipe, and no signature technology. Clean and disinfect all retail areas daily, including products. Try to avoid client touching products that they don't plan to purchase. Clean and wipe all door handles and other surfaces that are regularly touched by clients and staff with disinfectant wipes. Provide hand sanitizers and tissues for employees and clients. Consider floor stickers and signage that provide guidance for social distance. Placement of visible and appropriate signage to communicate to the customer that thorough sanitation procedures are in place and consider placement of sneeze shields. Your restrooms. Clean and disinfect all restroom surfaces including floors, sinks, and toilet bowls. Store paper products in a closed cabinet and provide antibacterial hand soap. Place trash can by the door. Remove anything that does not have to be in the restrooms. Shampoo bowls. Clean and disinfect all bowls, hoses, spray nozzles, voiced handles, shampoo chairs, and armrest. Wipe down all back bar products and shelves. Discard and replace any products that have not been stored in a closed container. If available, wrap shampoo bowls in plastic and discard between each client. Consider asking clients to wash their own hair before entering the salon. And limit as much as possible face-to-face -face contact with clients. Consider using face shields by those employees providing shampoo services. Workstations. Clean and disinfect all works area surfaces. Clean and disinfect chairs, headrests, armrests. Um, the use of harsh disinfectants can damage leather chairs and cloth chairs um, and they can't be disinfectant. So please use a plastic covering if you have those type of chairs. Clean and disinfect all reusable tools and store in an airtight closed container. Clean and disinfect all appliances, shears, clippers, clipper guards, clippies, 
rollers, clips, brushes, rolling carts, and any other items used in connection with servicing clients. And once again, a reminder, if you disinfect your clippers or your shears, you need to oil them afterwards. And if you have a disinfectant oil like H42, so much the better. If you run them without oil, you're going to have problems in the future. Going on. Check to make sure all products such as lotions, creams, waxes, and scrubs have been in a closed container. If not, you must discard and replace. Remove and discard all single-use tools such as paper files, drill bits, buffers that have already been used. Clean and disinfect all linen hampers and trash container and only use such container that can be closed and used with liners that can be removed and discarded. Provide hand sanitizer at all work locations for employees and clients. Consider station barriers between workstations. The next one's pedicure bowls. I'm going to skip that. I'm also going to skip treatment rooms. If you have those things, go to the government website, the safety guidelines for returning to work, and read those. The last section is administrative controls. These are for your managers at the salon. Employees who are sick will be expected to stay home. Salon managers should provide training, hopefully this video will help, educational materials and reinforcement of proper sanitation, hand washing, cough and sneeze etiquette, using PPE and other protective behaviors. Ensure the break rooms are thoroughly cleaned and sanitized and not used by congregating by employees. Ensure that all sinks in the workplace have antibacterial soap available and paper towels. Post hand washing signs in the restroom. Provide alcohol wipes for use at phone stations. Be flexible with the work schedules to reduce the number of people or employees and clients in the salon at all times in order to maintain social distancing. Provide barberside or EPA disinfectant wipes, liquid disinfectant containers, barbicide concentrate, EPA approved disinfectant for disinfecting technical implements and work areas. And consider discontinuing hand relief treatments such as scalp, neck, and shoulder massages during the COVID-19 pandemic. That is the end of their 28 safety guidelines. I hope that you stay safe I'm uploading this to a new YouTube channel. It's called Love to Cut. Please subscribe. Please like it. I'm trying to grow the channel. If you have things to contribute to this channel, I'm open to them. Any comments or questions about any of this, please list below. I'll try to answer your comments and your questions.